Let's have a ball and I throw the ball horizontally like this way. Now, because of its weight, okay, because the ball has weight, bring it down, so that's, that's its weight, the ball falls as, as it flies out. How does it fall? Right, it, it follows a curve. It follows a curved path, right? A familiar curve as as, as it falls happens every time you throw something. And the reason why it falls is, of course, because of the weight. Now, the the, the effect of the weight, right? The effect of the weight is that it gives the ball an acceleration. Okay, let's see. Now, when you first throw the ball, you give it a, uh, in this example, you give it a horizontal velocity, that V. So the ball flies out with this velocity, but as, uh, as it flies, the weight gives it a, a, a vertical acceleration downwards. Okay, that causes the velocity to change. So, <coughs> <coughs> With um, with every <coughs> every short time interval, um, let's say we have a, a downward acceleration. Now I'll represent that by an arrow downwards. So there 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 is a downward acceleration uh, on the ball because of the weight. So the ball goes downward with a certain let's see goes downward because of the weight with a certain acceleration a okay so what was the effect of this acceleration a um, we know what what's the effect after some time okay let, let me just maybe say after a second or half a second later the ball will be somewhere there okay we know that the ball will be somewhere there so uh, it's still under the same acceleration. The acceleration is the acceleration due to gravity. Um, still a, okay. Where uh, you know we we know that this acceleration is nine point eight one meters per second squared. Okay, but the velocity, the velocity is not horizontal anymore. At first it was horizontal, right? At first when you first threw it, but down here, all right. After after this time, the velocity would be in a in, in a slanted direction, okay, because it's following this curve. So I have a new velocity. Um, okay, I'll maybe call it v one. A new velocity which is um, which is bigger, which uh, points downwards, has a different direction, and all because of this acceleration. All because of this acceleration, and let's think about how how this acceleration actually acts on the velocity. Now, think about the meaning of acceleration again. The acceleration causes a change in velocity. Okay, if you think back at, at our definition of acceleration, acceleration is is the change is the change change in velocity. Okay, velocity Oops. over the time taken change in velocity. Right now, so and the formula that I've been using is um, v minus u over t. Right, I've been thinking of this as the initial velocity, that as the final velocity. Now, um, okay, well why don't I follow this same notation? So let, let me let me change the notation a bit. I'm going to change that notation and change this. I'm going to call this 
v. I'm going to say that um, say that this is my initial u. Uh, I'm going to say that that's u. All right. So what this mean? What this equation means is that um, this time, because I'm not, we are not looking at motion in a straight line. V and U are not just positive or negative numbers anymore. They are actually vectors. So I have a vector U and a vector V, and the difference must be equal to uh, divide, divided by the time must be equal to the acceleration. Now, to, I'm for now I'm going to see. I, I want to see how this change in velocity, how this v vector minus the u vector so that's how i should think of this now it's a v vector minus u vector all right it's related to acceleration by if i if i move the t here over to the other side that's that's my a to the other side it's actually the acceleration a which is a vector multiplied by the time okay and the time is the time it takes for the ball in this example to to travel this curve, all right, and, and reach here. Okay, so let's let's think now. What does uh, each side of this mean? Okay, now a a times t a times t. What is a times t? A is this vector here. This this is a vector pointing downwards times t, and t is not a vector. T is just a number. So a times t, a times t means that I have a vector times a number. So the number multiplies by the length of the vector. Okay, so the answer of a times t is still a vector pointing in the same direction of a, but uh, the t, the length becomes multiplied by t. So that's the idea here. Okay, so a times t is, is just a vector uh, with the length of a t and has the same direction pointing downwards. <clears throat> so that's how I can think about it. A t is a vector. Um, it's a vector pointing downwards. Now what about v minus u? Okay, um, v minus u. Let's say u is horizontal, v is slanted. Now we know how to do vector subtraction, right? V minus u. Let's imagine moving u and v. So that u comes here. So that u comes here. That's u. And v comes here. That's my v. Okay. Now, vector subtraction. Um, in vector subtraction, we can find v minus u. Alright, once we draw this, this picture here with the with the tails of the two vectors touching each other, we can do v minus. We can find v minus u the answer by joining the tip of u to the tip of v. So here it goes. This vector here, tip to tip. This is the v. Yeah. Okay, this is the v minus u, this vector here. So what this equation, what this relation is, is telling us is that the v minus the u, this vector, this vector here, is actually the same as a t. Okay, same as a t. Now, for now, Let's not worry so much about the value of at. I'm more interested in the direction. Okay, the acceleration, the acceleration causes a change in velocity in the same direction as the acceleration. So that's what's going on. See, I have this this uh, u velocity at first. Okay, but because of the acceleration. Because of the acceleration, the, the starting velocity u becomes v. 
right? It becomes V. But what exactly has changed? Well, what has changed is that to the initial U, to the initial velocity U, this amount, this amount, which, which is the same as, as this, as this arrow here, right? This amount has been added. Alright, so this amount, which is the same as this arrow, has been added to the initial U. And as a result, the initial U becomes V because of this, this additional because of this additional amount there. Okay, so that's the connection between acceleration and velocity. Right. And what we have here, what we have here is a situation in which, uh, if we let, let, let's think about this. Now, it's, it's easier to understand if acceleration is in the same direction as the velocity, right? Then the velocity just goes faster and faster in the same direction. But this is a more tricky situation in which the acceleration is actually perpendicular at ninety degrees to the velocity. And what we have seen here is is this 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 effect, right? That the velocity changes direction and the ball the ball follows a curve. So that's what happens. That's a falling ball. But note that note that we have here. Um, although we say that at at the, that the acceleration is at ninety degrees to the starting velocity right after after the ball falls for some time the velocity direction has changed but the acceleration direction is still the same because it's it's, it's always in the direction of the weight so this means that after falling for a time the angle between acceleration and the velocity is not 90 degrees anymore Right, the angle becomes in, in this example it becomes smaller. So the, the acceleration is only at 90 de degrees to the velocity at the beginning for this example. And after that, the acceleration direction stays fixed. Okay. But uh the angle between and so the angle between the acceleration and the velocity has to change simply because the velocity um, changes direction.